And we're counting it down. Hello there, and welcome to another Mythbusters. I'm Dane Scott. It's all part of our Studio Take series, and during the month of October, it's all Mythbusters all the time. Every weekday, I'm hoping to have a different subject as we review some of the most important things that people talk about when it comes to voiceovers, some of the most common conceptions and in some cases misconceptions you're hearing a little echo because it's coming back in my speakers here so I'll just bring that back down a little bit more common uh, conceptions and misconceptions hello Glenna nice to have you with us and uh, hopefully many others will chime in today feel free to share it around too as you uh, notice that we're going live here coming up in about uh, 10 seconds or so we'll get started and talking about uh, acoustic panels today do you need them do you need to buy the professional ones? What's the best choice for someone that is getting rolling in voiceovers? So once again, welcome to this get-together. And I hear a train coming. That'll be interesting. All right, well, we deal with it. Mythbusters today, do I need to buy acoustic panels? And that's what we're going to be addressing. Uh, let me start by saying that there are lots of different ways that you can set up. Yes, uh, Monday, or rather Friday, of last week when we did our last session we did an overview of the whole idea of, of an isolation booth do we need to have an isolation booth is that really a necessity and it kind of depends on your situation uh, sometimes it can be advisable if you've got a really ringy room and no other alternative you don't have a big enough closet to set up in um, for whatever reason maybe because of your climate uh, setting up in the car is not uh, going to be too good especially in the winter time so those things have to all be taken into consideration. Now today, as we think about um, the ways that we can take whatever location we're going to use and turn it into something useful, uh, we're going to discuss the, the properties that are necessary in order to create a space that you can record in without it creating problems. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's easy for someone that's been doing this for a long time to just kind of launch in on this without making any assumptions or uh, having made assumptions that people already know more than maybe they do about the subject matter. So let's just talk about uh, a room. If you've ever rented an apartment, an unfurnished apartment, and the first thing you did was to walk in and it sounded like you were in a shower, you know, because all, it was it was empty in there. All there were were painted walls. And when you talked, it just it was like it has a certain kind of its own ambience. You know, it's this this really ringy, echoey, hollow sound. Well, the reason is because nothing is stopping your voice from hitting the walls and bouncing back off again. Uh, the ceiling, the walls, if it's if it's shiny floors, you know, like uh, tile floors or uh, varnished wood floors or whatever, man, you've got an echo chamber there. Um, in your home, if you've been there long enough to furnish it and to do some things with it, you probably have curtains hanging up on the windows. You have carpet maybe on the floor. You've hopefully got some furniture, and some of it will maybe be hard furniture. Some of it will be soft furniture, um, you know, a bed. A couch those are soft fabrics uh, relatively absorbent of sound so as you start to add things to the room some of that uh, horrible Darth Vader echoey hollowness starts to go away uh, when we built the house that I'm in now which we've actually been in since 1980 believe it or not um, I had kind of that in mind I was young and I didn't know a lot about it but I had them do what's called orange peel type um, spray of um, plaster on the walls, the you know, on the drywall, um, in hopes that that would help to kind of make it a little less reflective. In the living room, um, I used a, a kind of a paint that had sand in it, and I painted the ceiling with that, rolled it on. That was heavy stuff. Oh, my goodness. Uh, but it probably does, does help to keep the, uh, the ringiness down. My idea back then was not so much about recording, but just having a good listening space for music. <clears throat> well, in this room here, yeah, we've got the uh, the orange peel, which is you know kind of the little bit of lumpy surface plaster, but it's painted. And if it weren't not if it weren't for things that we did to treat this and make it better, it would certainly still be kind of a ringy room. So, in my own case, what I've done is to add some items to it that I think will help, and it has helped. 
Uh, though, uh, as I mentioned yesterday, there are some things that were already here that were helpful, like 12 feet of bookshelves, floor to ceiling, <clears throat> and a few other things. We did have carpet. We replaced it with something thicker recently. We added a wraparound console, which will start to take a, a, and introduce a little more um, echo back in, but then acoustic panels and so on. Um, all of this to say that any room can be made more or less reflective depending on, the, on what's in it. The hardest thing to get rid of a reflections on will be the ceiling, of course, unless you happen to have things hanging from the ceiling or you've treated it in some special way, uh, maybe draping fabric or creating panels that are suspended from the ceiling that help to catch and baffle some of the noise. Uh, otherwise, every surface that's shiny and smooth is going to bounce sounds back. So if you're going to try and use an existing room, you have to look for every way that you can in every place that you can to reduce the amount of echo or bounce off of shiny surfaces. That can be done in so many different ways. Uh, a lot of people, they'll look at these videos that people have put up and they'll immediately go out and start buying expensive acoustic foam panels and some things like that. What I want to do is to just talk about some of the different alternatives that are out there and what I've done and some things that I can recommend, okay? So let's start out by uh, just going to uh, here's something that quite a few people do. These are moving blankets, and they are, they also call them sound blankets. And this one is uh, 80 by 96. Uh, these are the kind of things that maybe you would wrap around uh, your dining room table when you're going to put it in a U-Haul. You know, as a matter of fact, when you rent a U-Haul, sometimes they'll actually include those, those blankets, or, or sometimes you have to rent them. Uh, additionally, but they go around the objects that you want to protect so they don't bang into each other. So they're kind of a padded blanket, kind of like a quilt, really. And they do have, because they have some batting inside of them and have kind of rough fabric uh, or you know, not real super shiny fabric, they tend to be somewhat absorptive and can be a, you know, an interesting uh, idea for uh, a treated space where you want to record. Uh, those could be hung from the walls, they could be draped from the ceiling. Um, you know, if you used enough of them, they can do a pretty good job. Some people will make kind of a, kind of um, a tent room, you know, with a combination of PVC pipes and and blankets like this, and um, you know, a tent fort, or a, yeah, I guess that's what we would used to call those is like a, a tent fort, like we used to make boxes and go and play in them and this kind of thing. But this one's going to be a little bigger, hopefully. I have to tell you. Some of my very first voiceovers were done with nothing other than a heavy quilt pulled over my head and over the microphone like this, you know. So in a pinch, anything's possible. I had to make sure I had a light under there so I could see. I had my microphone, and I had a big quilt over my head, and I did voiceovers like that. There's no shame in ad-libbing, especially when you're early on in your career here. Uh, if you needed to do something like that, it, it, that can be done too. Just find yourself a desk, scoot up to it, set your mic up, uh, pull a blanket over your head, and do your voiceovers. Uh, or, you know, if you want to splurge, you can get yourself a quilt or maybe go to Goodwill and, and buy a few. You don't have to necessarily go and buy sound blankets. These things are, this one here is 43 bucks, uh, plus probably shipping. And uh, it's, it's big though, it's 80 by 96, but still, you know, there are th some things you can do. Goodwill is your friend. Um, I'm going to talk about a couple other thing, kind of goodwill ideas here uh, before we go too much further. Let's assume that uh, you have a space. It is a closet, or it's a bedroom, high gym, or it is some other um, small location. Uh, maybe it's a, a bathroom that's no longer being used as a bathroom, or it's a very small spare bedroom, or a medium-sized spare bedroom, or whatever you've got it available to you. And you want to try and make it uh, the best you can make it. Well, number one, you want to think about where you position your desk in the room. If you're going to use sit at a desk or stand at a, you know, an easel or a, some kind of a pedestal or whatever to do your voiceovers. If you're in a room that you're going to be recording in as opposed to an isolation booth, um, you want to try and center yourself within that room. Not be close to a wall, not be close to the side walls, and not be close to the front wall or the back wall. By setting yourself, centering yourself, 
uh, you reduce some of the problems with uh, with fast echo or quick slap back that you'd get, for example, uh, if you're very near to the the wall that's in front of you. So the positioning is important. And then when it comes to the treatments that you use, uh, just be thinking especially about the idea of trying to get as much absorption everywhere that you can as possible. You know, you can get scientific about this, but we're just talking about kind of, you know, your blanket fort mentality. The idea is we want to just try and find the best way we can to make the room as good as we can. So number one, positioning yourself in the room is something that a lot of people don't think about and realize, but that can be an important uh, element of this. Another one is if you've got a refrigerator down the hallway, you're going to have sound coming through the door, under the door, around the cracks. Sound travels through cracks. So a little weather stripping around the door can be good. If you have a solid core door, that's awesome. Uh, you know, if you can find a used one or you just decide that you want to replace the door with a solid core door, that's a very, very good idea. And then you can get a strip, you know, a strip across the bottom, like a barrier strip that they use them on exterior doors to keep, you know, cold air from seeping in. It's just kind of a, it's like a, a strip that you screw down and then it has kind of a, a flap that goes up against the door. Uh, anything like that to block the sound from sneaking in. If you have curtains, close them, you know, during your recordings. If you have thick curtains, that's the best of all. It's something that's going to be not so much to block noise coming from the outside, but to absorb noise coming from you. And then we look around the room and we say, what else can we do? Well, here are a few interesting ideas. First of all, throw pillows. Do you have some? Are you using all of them? Does your mom have some <laughs> sitting in the attic or in the, the basement? Uh, maybe some that, you know, at one time they seemed like a good idea and now they're just gathering dust or, or just, you know, this looks like a pillow pile that's just sitting in a basement right here. Yeah, look at that. So maybe you've got a bunch of, of throw pillows. Spread them around. Corners are important. If you can stack a bunch of throw pillows kind of up along a corner or several corners of the room, um, if you've got tables or other objects in the room that are shiny, um, just make make your place cozy with uh, throw pillows. It, it helps to kind of make the whole thing seem a little more homey for you at the same time. All right, you ready to laugh? Really laugh? Okay, how about this? Stuffed animals. Stuffed animals are great for sound absorption. They have lots of varying surfaces sound is going to have a heck of a time coming back off of a stuffed animal. You know? So uh, take a bunch of stuffed animals. You can do all kinds of creative and interesting things with them. Uh, among the things you can do would be to, uh, say, take a rope and uh, run it from floor to ceiling and then, you know, pin some along the rope, you know, or, or just line them along shelves or stack them into corners. Uh, put them in, you know, if you've got the corner of a ceiling and you can have some stuffed animals in the corners of the ceiling that actually is is a is a good technique because because corners are kind of a problem uh, for acoustical properties in a room so maybe if you've got uh, a boy or girl who has grown past the age where they want their stuffed animals anymore but you can't you don't have the heart to part with them I got to show you something my youngest child is 36 and I still have Winnie. <laughs> Couldn't part with Winnie. So <coughs> Winnie's a little dusty, but we'll put him back. I always had an inclination to storytelling and narrating and stuff, so it was not an uncommon thing for me to be holding Winnie and gesturing with Winnie while I was telling the kids stories when they were little and doing the voice of Winnie and some of the other characters. Uh, that's a little bit of a digression, but it kind of fits in. I'm never going to find any other place to introduce Winnie to you. So, um, Stuffed animals, absolutely a possibility. All right. Uh, let's see here. We talked about moving blankets. Uh, acoustic blankets, they also call them that. There are some soundproof battings. We'll be getting into that in a moment here. Uh, sure moving blankets. Now here's one for 59 dollars 
and it's a whole batch of them. Um, these are probably, they're called economy ones. Uh, they're, but you get 12 of them. Is that right? You get a bunch of them anyway for uh, about 60 bucks. And so potentially you could do a lot with a batch of something like that. <clears throat> Either hanging them or rolling them or draping them or just putting them different places around your room or creating, like we talked about, the blanket fort idea. All right. I was doing a bunch of little mini researches here today. I'll start closing a few of these windows. Then we've got acoustic foam panels. Let's talk about the foam panels next. These you see in quite a few homemade isolation booths. Uh, you might even recognize, you know, that you have friends or colleagues who have used some that look kind of a checkerboard pattern like that. These are not uh, terribly expensive. Uh, you can get a 12-pack of of foot by foot, two inch panels for 25 bucks, you know, and I don't think 12 is gonna get you where you need to be. <laughs> That's a pretty small quantity because if you're gonna be covering a lot of area, um, the, all, the other thing is that you really have to be a little careful with these because some of them really do close to nothing. You know, they'll help some, but they're not, the, uh, they're not a perfect solution. Here's a 50 pack for 50 bucks. Uh, that'll give you some some coverage. So that's not too bad right there. And in a pinch, yeah, I mean, these will do an, a nice job for you um, compared to just blank walls. The, of course, you have the issue with these that, uh, you know, if this is, if you're renting an apartment, putting these things up really requires some kind of adhesive at the very minimum, like two-sided tape, maybe even like spray adhesive or, uh, you know, some something you'd slather on and stick them to. And that's not going to be real uh, good news for your landlord. So you have to think about those kind of things. There again, if you're looking about building a panel or a wall, a room within a room, something like this can be good, but maybe not um, in place of also doing some other things with the room, you know, to treat the corners, to do some stuff, to make sure that, that the stuff isn't, that the sound isn't going to just, a lot of it get through the panels and come back to you. You know, but these are helpful. I think if you see reviews on them, you'll you'll find that they they do help and they do work. But you're spending money and you're not getting a hundred percent protection against uh, reflection with these, from my understanding at least. Um, let's see. Uh, Glenna says if you have a Harbor Freight, they are about nine dollars or less on sale. Must be talking about those blankets, I think. Uh, so okay, very good on that. Um, all right, so there's that. Now. If you are going to be using a room like I'm using here where I've got an actual bedroom that I've converted, and I won't take you through the whole tour again today because we did that yesterday, uh, you can build acoustic panels. And this is really a pretty cool way to go. And I would suggest that you think about it because they're not that expensive. They're certainly not difficult to make. And they can do a good job. You look at what's involved in them and you kind of go, wow. You know, I could do that, you know. So let me get to one of those. First of all, you can buy them, acoustic panels. These, these are just about the same size as, if you look back here, you can see I've got three of them there, and I won't try and spin this thing around the room, but I've got one, two, I'm going to have three others in the room besides. But um, those that you see back there, are um, four feet high by two feet wide by four inches deep. And if you look at these, now these are, let's call it 60 bucks. They are four feet by two feet by two inches deep, and they're $60. So they are half the depth of stuff in them. Now they're attractive, they've got nice. Uh, nice upholstery on them and I'm sure that they've chosen the kind of fabric that will absorb the sound. The idea is with these panels that it is a wood frame. Inside of the wood frame you have usually mineral wool insulation. There's one that's called Roxul, R-O-X-U-L. That we couldn't find around here but I did find a mineral wool made by Owens Corning. It's got the pink panther on it, you know. 
don't get the fiberglass stuff if you can avoid it. That, that works too, but, you know, fiberglass is fiberglass. So I kind of feel a little bit safer and better about the, uh, the mineral wool. Uh, but you can get a bale of this stuff for 50 bucks, not even 45 bucks. And a bale of mineral wool is enough to do a bunch of these panels. What else do you need? Some wood. You know, if you, we happen to have enough kind of just different boards around the house here, um, two by fours and one by two, one by four, one by threes, whatever we had, uh, to make up a batch of these panels. And I don't have right now all of the dimensions of wood that are recommended for it, but you can find uh, lots of good videos on, on, for example, YouTube to show you how to constructing the, construct these things. But basically, it's just a wooden frame, not a fancy one. This is rough carpentry. A wooden frame, you, um, you put the insulation into it, you put a, a few little slats of wood, front or back or both, to keep the insulation from you know rolling out. And then uh, you, what you can also do is to take uh, some screen. Um, we use landscape, you know, the, the, what do they call it, weed barrier screen and just kind of stretch that over it and stapled it down. That also helps to kind of hold the insulation in, in place and in shape. And then ultimately, the last thing you do is just wrap some kind of fabric around it that is sound absorbing, something that if you blow on it, you can feel your breath pass through it. Burlap. Um, I'm not good with fabric names, especially when I'm on camera and trying to think. But um, you can look into that. There are a variety of different kinds. You do not need to buy something that was designed specifically and sold specifically as something for this. Uh, you know, use your creativity. Uh, look into some different options. I think chenille is one of them that I had read about. And uh, but again, I'm not a I'm not a seamstress or guy, so I don't know about that that part of it. Um, we have ordered some interesting ones for these back panels that will actually result in our having created um, a mural. It's a, it's a big fabric mural and it's going to be cut into pieces and then spread across those three panels. So it should look really interesting when we're done. And I'm going to put light, wild, wildlife scenes on my other panels here too. So I'll try to take you on a tour of that once it's all done. Um, but these things, if you buy them, uh, gosh, if, if, this, if this one, which is four by two by two, you know, if, if twice that, if it were four deep, how much, ex how expensive would that cost? You know, it might be uh, $75, $100 for one panel. And we did all of these for probably less than $100. We used just rough lim lumber that we had. We had some landscape uh, stuff here. Uh, just work with what you have. And you can create some really good sound absorbing panels. You're mainly just creating an enclosure for this mineral wool and a fabric that can pass through and get into the mineral wool so that sound gets in and it can't get out. Like the Roach Motel on the old raid ads, you know. Roaches check in, but they can't check out. That's kind of what's going on with, with this. Uh, so you create these panels. Uh, it's a good idea also to mount them away from the wall. So we actually have ours standing off away from the wall about an inch and a half uh, with just some, some spacers. We used corks. And then we had to come up with a, a mounting rail kind of a thing to mount them to the wall. Uh, as to what actually is fixing them to the wall, we're using drywall anchors. Self, what do they call them? Self-threading drywall anchors or something like that. It's doing the job. Um, before I've ever gotten them finished now, once the fabric arrives, we can get down to business on getting them wrapped up. But already I put them up and uh, the room is great. It's, it's sounding really good. So... Do with what you got. Uh, Glenna says, I also use king size pillowcases and stuff them with two 18 by 18 by 2 inch foam seat cushions and put them on my moving blankets to help with sound. The foam cushions are cheap at Walmart or Hobby Lobby. That's a nice idea. Uh, I just wish I could scroll better in here because I think there are other messages that I'm not seeing. Uh, but at any rate, I don't want to take up your whole day with this. Um, we've been going pretty long already, haven't we? Uh, the idea, though, is just think padding, cushioning, soft, absorbing, absorbing um, pillows, stuffed animals, rough fabrics, quilts, blankets, 
You can do a lot with what you have. You can, as Glenn mentioned, you can get things uh, discount at places like uh, Hobby Lobby or Walmart. I wouldn't rule out the idea of going to St. Vincent de Paul or Goodwill and having a look at what's there. You might end up with some crazy old wool trench coats and just fun stuff that you could hang around, you know, and create this kind of a shabby chic <laughs> studio that uh, does a fabulous job, you know. You could make it look like a Goodwill store inside. You know, that, that would be really shabby chic, wouldn't it? But uh, be creative. Come up with ideas. I think you'll find that without spending a lot of money, you can turn a room into something very functional, as we've done here, that will do a nice job for you. Thanks for uh, watching today's feed. If you would like some help, um, before you go and spend a lot of money, I recommend, and this is something I've been kind of preaching about uh, lately, I strongly recommend that before you go and invest a lot in doing voiceovers, that you be sure that you are, that you have what it takes, the chops, as they say. Some people can develop the ability even if they don't have it initially. Some people are going to have a harder time doing that than others. Nobody should feel that they have to abandon their dreams if it's something that they're really passionate about. But I think it can be a good idea early on before you go and spend the equipment, spend money on gear, on acoustic treatments, on microphones, on any of that, to just get with someone you trust and get an assessment of where your abilities are, where your abilities lie, what the prospects are for you. This is something I can help with, so uh, I'm, I'm charging, uh, disc I'm doing this discounted, especially during COVID right now. So if you just send me a personal message, we'll get together, we'll baseline you, basically, and uh, it's $50. And I think that that can be a really good idea early on in your professional career to be sure that you're on a good trajectory, that this, this is going to work out for you, uh, or at least you have good prospects of it working out for you before you do the investment. We'll do another uh, Mythbusters tomorrow. I have to actually look and see what uh, what it's going to be. The The playlist of all of these is now up at YouTube, and I will, uh, in our groups, I will share the link to that so you can check that out as well. And um, there we go. That's it for today. Thanks for joining me for this, uh, this rendition, and I'll see you on Tuesday.